Well, the current situation in the home improvement industry, like any other retailing business today, is very difficult. First of all, we've got high inflation. It's now almost over 10%. Uh, on top of that, you've got the energy crisis, so people have got less money to spend. So I'm sure this is going to hit us a little bit uh, going forward. Also, it's amazing in the service industry, you can't get any people hardly anymore. Um, there's quite a lot of fluctuation and a lot of the retailers are finding it difficult to find people. And of course, the sourcing of products is uh, uh, the lack of raw materials, the price uh, increases. For example, lumber went up an amazing, uh, uh, well over 50%. But now I do understand that the market is getting quieter and it's getting better. But I'm still very optimistic that uh, in our system, in our democratic system and the way we operate, and uh, uh, I'm sure that we'll come out okay. Well, first of all, I don't see any solution at the moment because we are really dependent about the Ukrainian war, this brutal attack of uh, Putin on, on Ukraine. Uh, we don't know when it's going to end or how it's going to end. And I think this is probably today the, the very biggest problem that we've got. Uh, and so I don't think anybody can predict when, when the situation is going to end or, or how it can change. Well, the supply chain issues have never been worse than they are today. Or, uh, first of all, uh, getting the products you need. Before we were proud of when you ordered 100 products, you got 97, 98. If you order 100 today, you may only get about 50 or 60%, and then you may have to wait a long time for these products. Uh, also, the cost of raw materials, the shortage of raw, raw materials. You know, t and take lumber, for example. Lumber's gone up over 50%. I do understand that the market is now getting calmer and the prices are beginning to tumble a little bit, but compared to a year ago, the prices are very extreme and not only that, you can't even get the products. So the supply chain, uh, we had problems of course before with the container prices from China, they're, they're exorbitantly high, uh, which all added to the problems uh, uh, there. The other thing on the supply chain is that a lot of our retailers have their own label products made uh, overseas. And of course, because of the pandemic and because of all the other issues at all, um, there's no reliability on, on sourcing these products at the moment. So if you go into a home center today, you may see more empty shelves than you've ever seen for the last few years anyway. So there are a few problems that we've still got to be solved. Well, we've got a lobby office in, in uh, Brussels and we've been contesting this a little bit because we felt they were too high and uh, we need the products. We want to offer our consumers good price, uh, good quality at good prices. Uh, and we've had these anti-dumping prices put on. Um, the feedback has not been as much as I thought it could have been, but I think that's because this has only started in February this year. Uh, many of the products anyway, and a lot of people bought a lot of products before then. So yes, it's not a good thing for the, we don't agree with it, we don't want these tariffs because we want to make sure they offer our consumers the best possible prices. But we must make sure that we're being fair to everybody. There really is no alternative uh, to, to what we're getting from China, as much as people like to believe they can source elsewhere. Well, it's, it's having effect now because, as I mentioned, we can't get all the products that we need from China. So we do hope that they will change their policy. This very strict policy has left huge problems for us with sourcing of the products. And it's not getting any better. We don't see any, any end in sight. So I, it, I, I do hope that we can get back to normal. When it comes to the um, currency rate, I'm not really up to that at the moment, but I haven't heard many complaints or many problems about that at the moment. I see.
see many, many opportunities in many markets going forward. We're still in a very growth industry in the home improvement. Every year, it, it's, it's, the sales are improving, it's getting better and better. And COVID, although it was very bad and it was awful for everybody, it did give the consumer the recognition of how very important our home is. Uh, and we are seeing that the sales, even in this depressed year of 2022, uh, that we are still making more sales than we were in 2019. So I believe that people have really discovered their homes. This will have an effect on the demand and I think we'll see uh, a, a continuing improvement in home improvement sales throughout the world. And if you look at the continents, of course, America is, is by far the biggest, over 50% of the total market in home improvement. And then you've got Europe, which is about 30%. But then you've got the others, the, the continent of Africa, of South America and of Asia. These are hugely potential markets for, for anybody who is a manufacturer today. There are indeed, and particularly today with the energy crisis, uh, with energy saving products that I think that all the home improvement companies will be really concentrating this as a, uh, it's not a new market, but it's a very dynamic market now due to the, uh, the energy crisis where people will be looking at having new windows, making sure that they're heating, they're not losing a lot of heat from them. Uh, and generally anything to do with energy saving is going to be very good in the future. Oh yes, I think there are many, many opportunities and I, I think one of the opportunities going forward, we've read that due to COVID-19, that the sales, of, uh, although we're having a, not a very good year, we're expecting Europe to have less sales in home improvement compared to a year ago. I would just say with a broad brush about 10%. But we are still having higher sales than we were in 2019. And the reason for this is that, that people have discovered their homes in COVID. They couldn't go out, they couldn't go anywhere, they had to keep at home. Uh, and also the younger people, the millenniums, uh, uh, the very younger people, they have now discovered home improvement. Before they didn't, it was all maybe more on the technical side, the computer side, the video, what have you. But since the pandemic, we have seen a very clear improvement in home improvement sales. We expect that to continue. We're having a difficult time. We may not be able to, we may not be as wealthy as we were before. We may have to cut down a little bit, but I believe in this democratic capitalist system that we have, that we will find a way. And I'm sure with a lot of innovations to come that I, I still think that we still will have a good future. Let's only hope the war ends in uh, Ukraine. Let's only hope things get back to normal. Let's hope we get a control of the inflation and we're back where we were. Because today, it is very, very difficult. I asked uh, a board member today, uh, again from a company, how he sees the future. And he said, you tell me. He said, who can predict the future? Whereas before you could plan for the next year, you could tell the market, well, how are you going to be? At the moment, we've never had, in all my working life, and that's now 66 years, I've never experienced a situation that is so uncertain about the future than we have today. <music>